Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at simple liquidation example. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind my viewers to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and CPA lectures. If you're if you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist, let the world know about them. If you're benefiting from them, it, mean, it means other people might benefit as well. So share the wealth. This is my Instagram account. This is my Facebook account. And on my, on my website, you could always donate if you'd like to support the channel. Also on my website, I do have offers. And right now, Becker's CPA Review is offering a $1,000 off. It's a limited offer for the summer on the Becker bundle four parts of the CPA exam you will have unlimited access and you'll be able to complement to supplement your college education although you might you are not studying for the exam now but you can buy the course to use it to prepare for the exam and it will help you with your college career becker will have over 2000 plus cpa questions plus hundreds of hours of lectures by qualified becker faculty so in this example, we would look at a simple liquidation example to illustrate the point of the simple liquidation. We have three partners, Pete, Tom, and Zach, have operated a laundromat for 10 years. The, partner who shared the, uh, the partners who share the profit, four to three to three, respectively, decide to liquidate the partnership. So the first thing I want to make sure students get confused about is four to three to three. It means what? It means if we take four plus three plus three that's ten it means this is pete tom and zach pete share is four tenth tom shares is three tenth and zach's share three tenth so this is forty percent forty percent i'm sorry thirty percent and 30 percent this is their this is their respective shares now let's assume we have four to three to three then one of them left one of the partners left and we, we still have four and three now we have four to three four plus three equal to seven we still have four seventh and three sevenths so this is what happened if one if one of them leave the partnership so you understand how this ratios work i want to make sure you do so and they sold they sold their assets for thirty thousand dollars this is their balance sheet they have right now cash of 15 they have other assets of 110 and they only got thirty thousand for this that's not good they sold it at a loss it means they're selling it very quickly that is their liabilities forty two thousand and this is their capital balances or their capital balances is a credit means because it's on the under liabilities and capital and it's not negative so they don't, they don't have any deficit and this is where, where where do they stand from a personal from a personal level pete that's their personal status they have fifty five thousand in assets and eighty thousand in liabilities so pete basically at a deficit personal deficit of twenty five thousand what does that mean it means don't expect pete to contribute anything to the to the partnership because pete's money will have to go and meet his current his personal obligation tom he has thirty thousand in personal liabilities 20. if tom has a deficit tom has have some money to 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 cover zach his assets are less than his liabilities so we don't expect zach to contribute anything to the partnership in case his balance goes into deficit so the only person that could possibly contribute is that tom and tom can possibly contribute up to 20 000. so let's take a look at the beginning balances and start this process we have cash of 15,000, non-cash assets of 110 42 000 in liabilities 55 000 the credit balance for tom 14 000 the credit balance i'm sorry 55 for pete 14 000 for tom and 14 000 for zach the first thing they did is they sold their non-cash asset for 30,000 and they had a cost of 110 therefore the partnership will have a loss of 80,000 so the partnership will debit a loss 80,000 debit cash of 30,000 and they will credit non-cash assets 
of 110. Then we have to allocate the loss to the various partners. So we have to take this loss and allocate it to the various partners. So we're going to debit. We're going to debit Pete's Capital. We're going to debit Tom Capital. We're going to debit Zach's Capital. And we're going to credit the loss of 80,000. How much do we debit and credit? Well, Pete's going to get 40%. Tom, 30%, and Zach, 30%. Therefore, it's going to be 20, um, 24,000 to Tom, 24,000 to Zach, that's 30% of 80,000, and 32,000 to Pete. Okay, now let's go ahead and allocate. So we're going to increase cash by 30,000, reduce our non-cash asset. Now our non-cash asset is, is zero. We have cash of 45. Our liability is still 42. We're going to reduce Pete's balance by 32,000. It's still credit. Tom's balance, we're going to reduce it by 24. Now Tom's going to go down to deficit. Now Tom has a deficit. Tom has a deficit now. Tom has a deficit. And we're going to reduce Zach's balance, and Zach has a deficit as well. They both have deficits. So this is what we did. We sold the asset and allocated the loss. Sold the asset, allocated the loss. Okay? Let's clear everything before we move to the next step. The next step is this. We know now, we know now that Zach has a deficit balance. Now we know Zach has a, deficit has a deficit balance. And if we look at the prior slide, we don't expect anything from Zach because Zach, his personal asset can barely cover his personal liabilities. Therefore, we don't expect to get anything from Zach. What does that mean? It means we're gonna take Zach's, Zach's balance, okay, Zach's balance of 10,000 and allocate the balance to Tom and Pete. Why to Tom? Because Tom will, Tom has some cash. Some will, Tom will eventually contribute some cash to cover his balance. And Pete already has a credit balance. So they're going to be absorbed by, by Tom and Pete. How are they going to be absorbed? They're going to be absorbed by the rate of 4 and 3. Okay? 4 plus 3 equal to 7. 4 seventh will go to Pete. And 3 seventh will go to Tom. Let's do the computation. So of the $10,000 that Zach's cannot recover times, let me, let's do 4 seventh first. 4 seventh, 4 seventh times 10,000, which is 5,714, 5,714. So we're going to, we're going to reduce the balance by 5,000. 714, and we're going to reduce this balance by the remaining, which is 4,286. So this balance is allocated to those two. Okay? Allocated to those two, and as a result, Tom is went down, his, his, his account went even further negative deficit to 14,286. No worries, remember Tom has some money from personal asset. Pete's account still credit, although it's lower, went from 23 to 17 but he does he does still have some credit in the account the next thing we're gonna do Tom's gonna come up come, come up with his share of the cash and by the way the journal entry for this kind of so you know what the journal entry is we debited I'm just gonna show you the journal entry since we're doing the journal entry we debited Pete's capital 5714 we debited Tom's capital, 4,286, and we credited Zach, ten thousand, and by crediting Zach's, we took Zach out of the picture. 
Okay, we took we 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 brought his account up. We brought his account up to zero. Okay, the next thing, Tom's gonna contribute money. Tom's gonna contribute fourteen thousand two eighty six. We're gonna debit cash fourteen thousand two eighty six. Debit cash and credit his account. Credit Tom's capital for that amount. And by crediting his capital by that amount, we brought his capital up to zero and Tom is out. Okay, so Zach is out, Tom is out. This is how much cash we have. This is the liability that we have. And this is Pete's remaining balance. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to pay off the liability. We're going to pay off the liability for 42,000. We're going to debit. The entry will be debit. Liabilities. 42,000. Reduce the cash. 42,000. So notice cash went down. Liability went down. The liability is out too. And what we're left with obviously is is Tom. Tom still have 17,286 of capital. And actually we're going to do we're going to distribute the remaining cash to him. So we're going to debit Pete's capital. 17,286. We're going to credit cash. 17,286. Cash is out. Non-cash assets are gone. Liabilities are gone. Pete's capital is gone. Tom and Zach's gone. We liquidated the partnership. We are gone. Now, if you are asked how much did they pay of the how much did they pay to the creditors? Basically, Zach, Zach only paid thirty thousand to the creditors because he got thirty thousand in assets, fifty thousand in liabilities. He couldn't even pay his personal account. He only paid the personal he couldn't even pay his personal debt. He still have a deficiency of twenty thousand. That's his problem. Tom has a thirty thousand in asset, thirty thousand in personal asset, ten thousand in personal liability. Tom only paid ten thousand, which is his personal debt, and the remaining twenty thousand went to cover his deficit. So, pay to the creditor is ten thousand. Pete had fifty five thousand in personal asset and eighty thousand in liabilities. Pete paid. Uh, Paid the uh, paid fifty five thousand to this personal debt. Then he had seventeen thousand two eighty six left from the partnership, and this is gonna go now. The personal creditors can go after this money, so the personal creditors now they, they can go after this money after the final liquidation. And this is what I talked about earlier when I said if you have anything left from the partnership, now the personal creditors can come after you. They were not covered wholly, but at least they, they covered and they recovered additional 17,286. So they came after this money. So the personal creditor came came after this money, okay? Came after this money that Pete's got, okay? Because he could not cover them from his personal asset, what's left in the partnership, now they have access to it. If you happen to visit my website, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck and see you on the other side of success.